Hey guys, welcome back, or I'm back. Um, I haven't been on here for a little while. That is due to our film production that has wrapped two weeks ago, and before that it was crazy busy. So we're in post-production right now, and I do have some more time to do some more videos where I talk about stuff we learn uh, all the time or have learned throughout the last years. And today I want to talk about something very hands-on in a way. Because I want to talk about the Mavic 4 Pro and kind of a hidden feature. Something that they've advertised, but then no one really was able to figure it out. I think Think Media, the YouTube channel, um, made a video about with Gerald Undone on how to get the max dynamic range out of the drone. Because I think they're claiming somewhere between or 16 stops of dynamic range. It's been a while since I've watched that video. It was before the production. But before the production, I just try to make sure I get the most out of our new drone. And I didn't think that much would be possible. So basically, what Think Media and Gerald and Dunn found out is you have to not use D-Log, the normal D-Log in order to get out the maximum dy dynamic range, which is counterintuitive. Usually, we filmmakers always say, well, log and raw always gets us the most for c pushing colors and gaining back highlights or shadow areas. But it's weird, not on the new Mavic 4 Pro. So basically, the setting you wanna choose to get out the max dynamic range is D-Log M. Obviously you can do the highest frame rates or whatever, the frame rate and the resolution doesn't matter, I think. But D-Log M in combination, now comes the kicker, auto ISO, which is ridiculous. Um, when I first heard it, I was like, this is stupid. Why would I use auto ISO? Um, and in a way it's kind of counter, not just counterintuitive, it's definitely counterintuitive, but also kind of a problem because depending on the lighting situation you know you might want to use your ISO manually to get out the max I don't know highlights or shadows or whatever the situation might ask for but you can always do that through going in and doing the exposure adjustment the exposure values like what is it called the EV correction but yes if you do that you can get out literally the amount of dynamic range that they are claiming on the website. And I think Gerald Undone, I haven't done the scientific test, obviously, but Gerald Undone has done this test and they were actually able to gain more dynamic range, slightly more than what DJI claimed, which is really impressive. But we are talking about better dynamic range than our Rad Komodo X. And I'm serious, I am serious. When I checked out that footage, when we got back into editing, I was blown away. Like, I was literally blown away. I am used to great footage, obviously, I am. We work with great cameras. But we are also used to drone footage being a whole lot worse than our bigger camera fixtures. That's how it's always been uh, when we go and review our aerial footage, it's always a little less quality than our cameras, but not on this camera anymore, or not on this drone, and it's ridiculous. Here are some shots where you see the DJI drone and the Gret Komodo X, and you see how much highlight details are actually still in the pretty much white house. It's a white house in direct sunlight, and in the background, we literally have a forest, which was super dark. And it still keeps those highlights, not just in the forest, but even like around the windows of the truck and stuff like that. It's impressive, really, really impressive. As I said, it's, I would say it's more than our Red Komodo X has, quite a bit more, I feel like. And that doesn't mean that the camera itself is a whole lot better than the Red Komodo X. But that, it's, 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 it's magic, it's witchcraft. I don't know what it is. Um, but 
it's definitely crazy. Okay, but does that actually mean that this camera is any better than our Red Komodo X? Because on paper, it, it could. You know, because on paper, this drone has a 6K camera that can also capture, I think, 60 frames per second. So, exactly like the Red Komodo X, I think the Red Komodo X has 60, 6K at 80 frames per second, but you know, kind of similar. And then the dynamic range is almost airy kind of quality. So, why why don't we just put this drone on a can on a tripod now and just use that? Well, there are still some big limitations. There are some things that I really think are annoying about this drone. Like for example, the rolling shutter is really bad. Really bad. Which if you're flying through a forest or stuff where you can't really tell what lines are perfectly um, vertical, you're good. Uh, I have a little footage right here of basically flying next to a bicycle. It's 15 miles an hour. It's not super fast. And you see it's fine up in the beginning where there's still trees. And then at the moment, something straight <laughs> comes into frame. You see incredible amounts of bending, like incredible amounts. So that's kind of bad. That's a bad real loss. Um, readout speed. I mean, you can still see foreground, background, all the shadow areas perfectly um, detailed. There's no blown out highlights anywhere. The, the shot actually looks like it was shot on an Arri Alexa Mini LF or something like that, you know? One other thing that I've realized and that is obviously due to the way the cameras are built for DJI drones and yeah, Many might argue, well, it's good that it's this way. And yeah, for certain scenarios, it is good. But basically, basically the depth of field and everything is in focus. And that's kind of annoying unless you are flying fast with a subject. So you have like foreground and background elements that are moving by and so are kind of blurry because of the motion blur. But with that extremely deep depth of field, just everything is in focus, so. That is definitely something that um, did annoy me at some time, points um, in time. But still, incredible dynamic range, so I can't be mad. And as I said, for a lot of scenarios, that long, that deep depth of field is really nice. Like this shot where I am flying through the trees with the house in the background. I want everything to be in focus uh, and sharp because it's this beautiful, landscape shot. But yeah, when I'm trying to capture something a little more close up, um, I would kind of want a little more, especially on the tele ones, um, just a little more shallow depth of field, just a little more blurry out of focus. And you can get blurry backgrounds. For example, if you go really tight, um, I have this one shot here with a, with a bicycle and we were literally holding the camera handheld, um, the drone, because Oh yeah, long story. But basically we're not able to get the red on a proper gimbal for, for that quick shot. It's really just a quick shot. So we did do that, try to get as close as possible with the drone to our subject. And, and yeah, it did turn out to have a shallower depth of field that way. Um, I mean, just because we're so close, I guess. But I think we were moving too much. I, I would definitely gotta, not gonna use this shot for anything, so. Okay, so that was the video on the drone and my updates and my review kind of of my experience shooting a feature film and having that in my toolbox. I am going to post more regularly again now that we're um, in post-production and I'll keep you updated with the film. I will probably have a lot of like hands-on experience stuff I will share about the last film that we did or challenges we ran into, or setups that we had that were really cool. We had some really creative things going on, so stay tuned.